Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2020 Ferris State University Football National Signing Day Press Conference. I'm Rob Bentley, the Assistant Athletic Director for Communications and the Voice of the Bulldogs, and welcome uh, to today's event. We'd like to thank those fans tuning in uh, also statewide online and around the world on the Bulldog Sports Network at ferrisstatebulldogs.com. This past fall, the Bulldogs obviously reached the NCAA Division II National Semifinals for the third time in four years and claimed a second consecutive GLIAC championship along with the Super Region Three title. They closed the year with a 12-1 record and are 27-2 over the past two years. Over the past six seasons, the Bulldogs have posted a 72-9 overall record, won four conference titles and three Super Region titles, in addition to four straight trips to the national quarterfinals or beyond. Uh, the Bulldogs also one of only four teams in all of college football to win 11 games each of the past six years, along with Alabama, Ohio State, and North Dakota State. Shortly, we'll hear first from the head coach of the Bulldogs, Tony Anise, who is the nation's winningest active head coach. He'll make an opening statement on this year's recruiting class. And then following that, we'll break down uh, each member of this year's class with comments from Coach Anise and then open it up for questions and comments. Uh, following the press conference, fans can find biographical information along with photos, video, and more at ferrostatebulldogs.com. And at this time, I'd like to welcome the head coach of Ferris State University football, Tony Anise, who will make a few opening remarks on this year's signing class. Thanks, Rob. Welcome, everyone. Um, very pleased uh, to get this over with. First off, um, signing day, February 5th. To me, like signing day is like one of the best uh, days of the year. Um, we get to celebrate, you know, signing some great young men, but it also uh, gives us an opportunity to turn the page and have an opportunity to catch our breath and look forward to, to spring ball. Um, I thought our staff did a great job. Uh, Coach Miller, being a new guy, came in as our recruiting coordinator and really did an uh, unbelievable job, uh, you know, just keeping us organized, keeping us on task, and, and really identifying uh, the players that we need to go out and pursue. Um, so I'm uh, pleased about that, and then pleased also about the rest of the staff, you know, just, just doing their thing to try to, to try to get the guys we identified early. Um, we had, uh, I think, in early August, or uh, once we started camp, we had a, uh, a group of guys up. Uh, we called it a junior day, although they were all going to be seniors. Um, and of that group that we brought up, I think 30 of them, I think we got 16 of them to sign with us today. So uh, great job identifying guys early. Um, also an extraordinarily uh, good job getting West Michigan kids. Um, Steve uh, recruits that area, and we did a really good job uh, in, in Grand Rapids, Muskegon area. And then also uh, Rocky goes down to the Battle Creek area, and we got a couple, uh, couple kids uh, in the Battle Creek area and then a, a couple more in southwest Michigan. So it's always our big priority to win uh, the west side of the state. We felt like we did a really good job with that. Um, towards the latter part of uh, our last official visits, uh, we brought some kids from out of state up, and we did really well to get those. I think of the, you know, if we brought five kids in, we, we got four of them. Um, and so uh, that was really good as well. So we really were blessed to, to really, uh, you know, get the kids um, to come and play for us, and it didn't matter where they were from. So excited about that. All in all, we did great in Michigan. Um, but uh, we feel feel wonderful about the class from you know everybody that came from out of the state as well. Thanks, Coach Anise. Uh, just to break down this year's class, uh, we have 38 signees, nine out of state, along with 29 from right here in the state of Michigan. 19 on offense, 16 on defense, two athletes and a specialist. And we'll start now by breaking down this year's class in alphabetical order. We'll start first with. Uh, Jacarvis Alexandri, uh, 6'1", 185-pound wide receiver from Miramar, Florida, a highly regarded prospect with outstanding potential, earned multiple varsity letters as a starter, was coached by A.J. Scott, uh, was selected to compete in the South Florida High School All-Star Game, played both wide receiver and defensive back on the high school level. Yeah, Jacarvis is a, a good athlete. Um, he could play DB. He'd be a long DB, 6'1", um, ran very well. Um, you know, Coach Smith was down there early January, identified uh, Jacarvis, and and uh, then you know we wrapped him up this past weekend. Um, you know, with a commit, and uh, you know we got two kids from Miramar um, right now on our team. They spoke very highly 
of uh, Jakarvis, and, and so we're pleased to have him. Next up, we have a 6'3", 270-pound offensive lineman from Chippewa Valley High School in Clinton Township, Daniel Allison, competed on both sides of the ball for Chippewa Valley, was coached by Scott Merchant. He's the younger brother of former Bulldog All-American Tyler Allison, standout performer up front with big potential, uh, was a multi-year varsity standout, and helped his team to a 9-1 overall record this past season. Yeah, so he's going to have to face that, you know, little brother of, of Tyler Allison, who was the GLIAC Offensive Lineman of the Year, but I think he'll handle that well. Tyler was harassing me in early uh, early August about Daniel, and uh, and I said, hey, you know, we we typically wait till we see senior film, so you know, we'll we'll make our our plug then. But uh, Coach Merchant's a good friend of our ours and a, a good friend of our program, and and we've had good guys from Chippewa Valley, and and Daniel's going to fit right in. You know, the culture with the O line is is incredible. Um, you know, we've got, you know, multiple All-Americans from that position group and, and we'll continue to grow and Daniel will be a big part of that. Next up from Rochester Adams High School, we have Bob Anderson, a 6'6", 275-pound offensive lineman who uh, was a Detroit News All-State honoree this past fall, multi-year year letter winner and starter for the Highlanders, uh, was an All-Oakland Activities Association honoree named to the Detroit Free Press All-Metro Squad as well this past year. Yeah, so Bob and Tim, I think we can do them together. They're virtually the same size. Both of them are heavyweight wrestlers. They alternate on who uh, who wrestles heavyweight based upon uh, you know whose turn it is. So when they get to the individuals of the wrestling, it'll be interesting if they match up because uh, I asked them who who would win the wrestling match if they wrestled, and and they both said that they would. So. Uh, um, this is our third set of twins, so uh, pretty cool. But um, from Rochester Adams, Tony Petrito, my uh, college roommate, um, teammate, and uh, so a uh, very good friend, obviously. And uh, he coaches uh, these two young men. Um, Jeff Schmitz is also Rochester Adams guy, so he was pushing and pushing for me to get some Adams guys. So. Uh, he obviously feels good about that now, but uh, Bob and Tim are big physical guys. Um, they play both sides of the ball. Both could be DNs, but uh, hopefully we get, you know, they've got big, thick, tall guys, but hopefully they grow into being 300 pounders and be dominant players. I think they will. Tim Anderson, also a 6'6", 270-pound offensive lineman, as Coach mentioned, from Rochester Adams. They helped their team to a 7-3 overall record this past season. He was also chosen to the Detroit News All-Metro North team. We'll move on now to Frank Black, an athlete, 6'1", 175 pounds from Oak Park, who was a versatile standout, coached by Greg Carter, earned multiple recruiting officers or offers as one of the state's top athletes, helped his team to an eight and two overall record, was an all-conference and all-area choice, regarded as one of the top players in the Detroit metro area. Yeah, Frank's an a athlete. We put him down as an athlete. He potentially could be a quarterback here, but he also, as a junior, played a lot of defensive back. Um, Coached by Greg Carter, who's a legend in, in Michigan high school football, and just uh, this year, this March, is going to be inducted in the Michigan Football Coaches Association Hall of Fame. So, congratulations, Coach Carter, to that. Um, Frank is, um, you know, been been the leader at, at Oak Park. Uh, was the leader this past year in a very competitive conference, um, and uh, he's got the versatility to play a lot of positions. So. We uh, will give him a shot at quarterback, but he might be out there being a receiver or it could potentially be in the secondary. So there's a lot of options for him. And, and we took him for that reason. You know, high school players, uh, sometimes they think they got to be pigeonholed into a position early. And really, from a college coaching perspective, um, the more um, the versatility of a young man, the better for us. So we're excited about Frank's versatility. Next up from Palmetto, Florida, we have Ellison Bradley, a 5'10", 175-pound defensive back, a highly talented defensive back for Palmetto High School, led his team to a 12-2 overall record as a senior, along with a top 15 ranking among all teams from the state of Florida, had 75 total tackles with three sacks last fall, was uh, an all-area choice, led his team to a district championship and played a key role during their squad's playoff run. Yeah, Ellison's a really good football player, a great tackler. Um, you know, it's a very highly competitive uh, league they play in there at Palmetto High School. It's literally 
maybe three miles away from Manatee High School where we've had a great group of uh, guys uh, come here from Manatee. And uh, I've known Dave Marino, their head coach, for years since being at Grand Rapids Community College. So he does a great job with, with his program. And, and Ellison, as a junior, did more covering uh, as a senior did more tackling, but in the you know in high school football, you know the the best part of, of getting something out of a defensive back would be you know being a being a steady tackler and and he was that comes from a great family and uh, like uh, you said, Palmetto had a great great season. They were 12 and two this year, and uh, we're blessed to have uh, Ellison. Next up, from right here in West Michigan, from Muskegon Mona Shores, we have Caden Brzezma, 6'3", 210-pound quarterback, who was uh, one of West Michigan's top talents, two-time All-State performer who was a first-team All-State selection this past year under head coach Matt Koziak, led Mona Shores to a state championship, threw for nearly 2,000 yards and 20 touchdowns, and had only two interceptions as a junior, also ran for more than 1,100 yards in his first season, and was a Muskegon Chronicle Dream Team selection the last two seasons. Yeah, Caden was, um, as, a, as a junior, had a great season. Um, got offered by several Division I programs. Um, we had had him on our radar for a long time. Um, Plays for Matt Koziak, who was one of my former assistants and a great friend. And so uh, this past season, Caden got beat up quite a bit, had a couple injuries, and, and uh, you know, grinded it out, grinded it out, and uh, did some great things. But... Um, helped his team make, make the playoffs and then had to surrender a little bit and allow, uh, uh, you know, another quarterback to roll in there and uh, win the state championship game there against Martin Luther King. But, uh, you know, ju just for him to lead his team the way he led his team and, and help Mona Shores win his, uh, their first state championship um, is pretty incredible. And so we've loved Caden from the beginning, and we uh, – you know, we're expecting big things. He's a big physical guy, um, can throw it and uh, run it and really kind of look, uh, he, he fits our profile for that position. Next up, also from West Michigan, we have Colby Brown, a 6'1", 185-pound defensive back from Comstock Park, who played both in the defensive secondary and a wide receiver, was a Grand Rapids area Dream Team honoree, an All-State performer in the defensive backfield, was also an All-Conference and All-Area Choice, who was named the, to the Michigan High School Football Coaches Association All-Star Squad. So Colby, uh, Colby wants pharmacy, so that's pretty incredible. Uh, you know, it makes it a little bit easier on us. and. And thanks to Ferris State for having such a diverse uh, curriculum and having so many programs and opportunities for young people. Sometimes, you know, they just choose Ferris um, before we even are deep into the process. But uh, Colby plays for another assistant, former assistant of mine, Tim Johnson, who was uh, a great friend as, all, as well and, and was my assistant at Grand Rapids Community College. But uh, Colby's just a versatile athlete. You know, he was at a, a one of our camps, and we liked him from the from the jump. Um, he could really cover, and he's long and can run. And uh, I think he's an underrated player um, in West Michigan, um, just down the road at Comstock Park. So we're excited. He's he's got a lot of skills to to really uh, you know have an opportunity to play here. Our next signee is a 6'3", 215-pound linebacker from Harper Woods. Deavion Brown, who saw action both at wide receiver and on the defensive side of the football for Harper Woods, has the ability to play multiple positions, was chosen as one of the Rising Stars' top underclassmen in the state uh, prior to his senior year, earned multiple varsity letters, and led his team to back-to-back -to -back state playoff appearances. Yeah, uh, Coach Miller did a great job in Deavion, um, really from the beginning. Um, he's a long guy, 6'3", uh, 215 pounds, athletic, tough, um, loyal. Um, he was committed to us, and and uh, some people tried to, you know, get in there and and, and manipulate him into to not choosing us. But at the end of the day, he's he's chose us. So uh, very pleased about that loyalty. Young people need to learn uh, what loyalty and commitment's all about. And Diavion did that the right way. Um, played for Rod Oden, who uh, has done. Uh, Miraculous things all over his, uh, you know, wherever he, he's been, East English Village and, and Harper Woods of late. Um, we've done very, very well with Rod Oden guys, uh, James Caesar 
It's a, a Rod Oden guy who played for him at East English Village and, and was a GLIAC uh, defensive back of the year. So Diavion, um, you know, coming with uh, the Rod Oden guys. I can't say it's just Harper Woods guys because it's Harper Woods guys and East English Village guys that we have here. Um, we've done very, very well, and Diavion fits uh, fits into that group. Um, we're excited about him. He's a he's a tackling machine and a great athlete. So uh, got a great body to be a linebacker here. Next up, we have Ramonte Caldwell, a six foot one hundred and seventy five pound wide receiver from River Rouge, uh, who was a talented prospect that played both quarterback and receiver during his prep career. A multi year letter winner and starter who guided his team to a twelve and one overall record as a senior this past season. Uh, also played basketball as a multi sport athlete uh, and was one of the metro area's top all around performers. Yeah, Ramonte uh, plays for uh, Corey Parker there at River Rouge and. Corey's a great, great coach, and, and obviously Rouge uh, won the state championship in Division Three this year, um, beating my Big Reds, which makes me really sad. But um, Armante uh, is is a gifted player. You know he can go get it. We also saw him at a camp and and liked him right away, and so he's been our rate on our radar from from the beginning. Um, you know he's just got to get a little bit bigger and stronger, which sometimes. You know, multi-sport athletes don't have the opportunity to lift the way they need to lift um, playing one sport. So we're expecting Armante to come in here, get in the weight room, put some weight on, get stronger and faster, and contribute to the wide receiver room. Our next uh, signee is a defensive back, 6'1", 170 pounds, from Detroit Edison, Vincent Cooley, who was a standout football and basketball player at Detroit Edison Public School Academy, competed at multiple positions, had one game where he ran for 350 yards and eight touchdowns last fall, helped lead Edison to the Final Four in basketball in Division Three last year, and has also competed in track and field, was a multi-year letter winner and starter. Yeah, we watched uh, Vincent uh, cover Imani Bates a few uh, weeks ago. Um, in, in a basketball game, and I'm not saying he shut him down, but uh, Monty Bates is tough to shut down. But uh, Vincent really did a nice job of, of keeping uh, Monty in front of him and, and putting pressure on him. So you look at those kind of little things when you're when you're a football coach watching kids play basketball. He moves his feet incredibly well. Um, he did have that extraordinarily unbelievable game where he had eight touchdowns. Um, Chanterius Brock is a very good friend. Uh, it's helped me throughout my career everywhere I've been. And uh, so I have a mad respect for uh, Chantarius. And he's, uh, he's a great, great coach who really cares about the young men that he serves. Um, Vincent is somewhat uh, untapped as, as a football player in that he came to the game late. Um, he was a basketball guy. And, and you see that a lot where basketball guys come to the game of football late. And, uh, flourish. I think he's going to be that type. He could be a running back. He could be a slot. He could be an outside receiver. He could be a defensive back. So, you know, there's like 10 positions he can play on the field. He will not play O-line or D-line. So the rest of it he can do. And so we're excited to, to get Vincent and can't wait for him to get on our campus. Moving on, our next signee is Caleb Davis, a 6'4", 210-pound defensive end from Grand Rapids Union High School, was another uh, talented West Michigan performer with big ability, was a team leader and captain, a multi-year starter and performer who competed as a wide receiver and at tight end, along with playing on the defensive line, also a basketball player who's earned multiple varsity letters. We uh, saw his film as a junior, and we were very impressed. Um, uh, and so... Um, you know, we, we just expect big things from him. Um, you know, Union is uh, really struggling a little bit with their football program, and sometimes you can find like a diamond in a rough uh, in those situations. And so we think uh, we think he is one of those diamonds. Um, um, you know, his brother Kedron uh, has been to school here, and and Kedron's a great athlete. And so uh, hopefully next fall we have him here together, and uh, you know. They can do great things, uh, enjoying the brotherhood they have and uh, opportunity to play, play for us here at Ferris State. 
Our next addition is Kachif Edwards, a 5'10", 170-pound slot receiver from Largo, Florida. Talented uh, slot who prepped at Largo High School, was a 2019 All-Star honoree in the state of Florida. Two-time All-State pick who was also a regional champion in the 100 meters. Uh, led his team to the state playoffs this past year. Was an elite playmaker and one of the most explosive players in the Tampa Bay area. Yeah, he is one of the explosive players in, in the Tampa Bay area and the whole state of Florida and in the nation. So uh, Kashif, is, uh, we're really excited to get him. He is not 5'10", but, uh, you know, I look down on him a little bit, so that means maybe 5'8 or 5'7", but kind of goes along with, um, you know, our situation with our fast playmaking slots. Um, he's the perfect guy for that position. Um, last year in the state track meet, he had a strained hamstring and I think finished, uh, you know, in, in the highest division, like in the top eight, like seventh, I believe. Um, you know, he won the regional championship. He can fly. Uh, his goal this year is to run 10-5. And so he can really roll. Um, had some opportunities with the division one. Um, but, you know, sometimes coming here with an opportunity to play, um, you know, it's it's better than being at a D1. Um, I say that because, you know, you saw the graphic uh, that you put out, Rob, about like players in the NFL, and we're out doing a lot of FCS schools and producing uh, NFL players, and and so uh, that appeals to people. Uh, Kashif is a playmaker and and a dynamic uh, athlete, so um, look out, you're going to see a guy that can really uh, make plays, watch his highlight film, and you'll know. Next, we'll move back to West Michigan. We have Jaden Friesen, six foot, 240 pound tight end from Rockford, who played both fullback and middle linebacker as well. Was coached by Ralph Munger, led the Rams to an eight and two mark in his final season. Two time All Conference selection, also named to the Grand Rapids Press All Area Dream Team. Helped the Rams to a state playoff berth and earned multiple varsity letters as a, as a starter for Rockford. Jaden's a great high school football player. Um, sometimes uh, just being a little shorter, you know, I just always say people, you know, your feet hit at the same spot. So I don't know why um, being short is a problem. You know, Ian Hall had the same thing at Granville and he's a dominant player for us. So um, Jaden's flourished in that program. I saw him in person several times uh, two years ago when he was a junior and and uh, I knew from, from the get-go that he was a great player. Played for the legendary Ralph Munger, uh, the, the uh, coach that has uh, recently retired. Um, so I can say on air here, congratulations, Coach Munger, to your retirement. It was always a pleasure coaching him, against him and always uh, thought he was a class act and always had an unbelievable program. So good luck, Coach Munger. Um, and, and you know, with Jaden, we're going to play him potentially at a fullback. And people are like, well, do you have fullbacks? Um, you know, we have H-backs. So um, this past season, we used Mason Bailey, who's a shorter, more pow powerful guy in that position. So it gives us the versatility here with Jaden to be a guy that's familiar with carrying the ball and also um, a guy that is tough and can block. So excited. Uh, we always kind of try to figure out ways to use people, so we'll figure out a way to use Jaden, and, and he'll have a great career here. Our next addition, also a tight end slash H-back, 6'6", 230, from Detroit Edison, Bryce George, who is a highly regarded prospect, who received strong uh, recruiting interest, played both tight end and defensive end on the high school level, was listed as one of Rivals.com's top potential tight end prospects in the state in this year's class, also a standout basketball player, uh, who was listed among the state of Michigan's top 100 prep basketball players earlier this year. Yeah, Bryce is... Uh... Bryce is one of the best ones we, we got in this recruiting class. Um, I'd rank him in the top five, not to demean anybody. You gotta still uh, show up and do it. But um, you know, he's, he's a young man that uh, tore his ACL like early summer, camp season, tore your ACL with division one potential offers, division one potential offers once you tear, tear your ACL and you don't, you know, in your junior year, it, it kind of hurts you. And so um, some people went away, and uh, we loved him from the beginning. Uh, had a great relationship. A lot of our coaches really established good relationships with Bryce. And uh, it says 6'6", 230 on here. 
Um, he was in that same basketball game we watched uh, with Ipsy Lincoln and, and Detroit Edison. And uh, Bryce looks more like 6'6", 260, maybe 6'6", 265. Um, so, you know, he's going to be a bully. He's an athlete. He rolled into that game and scored 16 points in the second half against the, you know, Ipsy Lincoln, who was the you know, divi- highest division state champ in Michigan last year. So uh, he's an athlete. He can uh, do a lot of things for us. Um, so we're thrilled, again, uh, coached by Shantarius Brock, thrilled to get uh, Bryce George to come to Ferris. Our next signee is a 6'4", 270-pound offensive lineman from Battle Creek Central High School, Kyler Granger, who played multiple positions on the offensive line, drew strong recruiting interest, also served as the team's long snapper during his prep career, helped his team to the state playoffs for the first time in a decade uh, in 2018, was an All-State honoree as a senior this past fall, who has also competed in other sports, including track and field and basketball, was an all-conference and all-area choice as well. Yeah, Kyler's dad, uh, Lauren, is a good friend. Lawrence, the head coach at Battle Creek Central, and has done a great job there. Um, Kyler's just a guy that um, I see him being a center. He's a tall guy, um, but he's played center there for, for Battle Creek Central. Um, and and he's, he's a guy that's just coming into his own, kind of a, uh, you know, sometimes these big guys are, are late to develop, and I could see where he really is starting to come into his own, um, developing and, and getting stronger and, and, uh, you know, just, just you know, somebody that Coach Parker, I think, uh, will do miracles with because Coach Parker's a great coach, and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure Kyler's going to be, you know, a guy that will be on the list in four or five years as a potential American player. Our next addition is another talented prospect from the state of Florida, a running back at 5'10", 175 pounds from Riverview High School, Cheyenne Graves, who – led his team to an eight and three record as a senior uh, and a state playoff appearance this past fall as part of a high octane offense, averaged 11.6 yards per carry in his final season as the team made its first state playoff appearance since 2006, was an all county selection in the Tampa Bay area who also earned all conference and all area accolades uh, over the course of his career. Yeah, Cheyenne has a great family, really, uh, really enjoyed them uh, on their official visit. Um, a lot of spirit, a lot of energy. A lot of enthusiasm. He played uh, for Coach Moselle, who uh, he uh, his 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 dad was the head coach of Thornton, uh, Bill, um, in in Chicago. So we've known him for quite a few years. Coach Rock developed a great relationship um, with with Cheyenne and and his family. And and uh, unfortunately, Cheyenne uh, got hurt also, tore his ACL, and so he's still in recovery phase of that. But he had a great season moving up into that, um, you know, moving up up until that injury. So uh, he's a dynamic athlete. He can really, uh, you know, make people, people miss in open space. Um, and he's physical when he needs to be physical. I like uh, his ball skills and his highlight film. You see him, uh, you know, playing defense and getting some picks and things like that. So really expect uh, some some great things from Cheyenne. Our next addition is a 5'10", 155-pound kicker slash punter from Forest Hills Central High School in Grand Rapids, Will Gustafson, who was a standout kicker and punter for Forest Hills Central, a multi-year letter winner, who was a member of a team that went 8-3 and three and earned a state playoff berth this past year, was one of West Michigan's top kickers and tabbed as one of the Grand Rapids area's top players to watch entering his senior campaign, was both an all-league and all-area choice. Yeah, play plays for uh, Coach Tim Rogers, one of the best uh, – Best coaches in West Michigan, um, done a great job at Forest Hills Central. Um, we've been on Will um, really all summer. Uh, Steve did a great job, um, you know, recruiting Will. Um, sometimes it's, it's challenging recruiting a kicker because, uh, you know, you don't think about how important they are until you don't have them. And uh, we've had Jackson Dieterle here for four years um, kicking, and he's done a great job. and. And we think Will can come in here and compete to, to play right away. Um, you know, people always ask me about redshirting, and and uh, you know, I always tell young people they really, truthfully want a redshirt. But if you can help us win, and you have the, uh, you know, we have the need to play you right away, you you potentially will play right away. And 
and Will has probably as much potential playing right away as anybody, not to threaten the guys that are currently here that are kickers and punters. But uh, Will's a great, great leg, um, you know, kicked a lot of touchbacks and and uh, this past season um, has great range. Um, he's only going to get stronger. And so uh, I think the best uh, quality he has is he's very accurate. And uh, so really excited to have him. Um, you know, uh, just a local guy at, at Forest Hill Central. So um, I think he'll do a great job, Will Gustafson. Moving next to the defensive line, we have a 6'4", 215-pound defensive end from Battle Creek Lakeview, Tavon Hughes, who is a standout athlete, also played wide receiver during his prep career, was a multi-sport athlete who competed in basketball and track and field, a multi-year letter winner and starter who was an All-State honoree this past season, both from the Associated Press and the Detroit News, helped his team to a district championship in an unbeaten regular season this past fall. Yeah, coached by Jerry DiOrio, who's uh, you know been around this state for a long time, particularly West Michigan, and uh, done a great job coaching uh, high school football in this state. Um, Tavon's a big guy, like very big and and athletic. He's uh, he's a guy that I think over time is just going to have extraordinarily uh, high upside. Um, it's one of those situations again where sometimes bigger guys like that. You know, with, with being basketball guys, you're not exposed to football at the level you need to be exposed at. But I think just the, the sky's the limit for him. You know, he, he can be a guy that he's 6'4", 220 now. He could be 6'4", 245, 250, you know, soon. Like that'll be in the, probably a year or two. And then by the time it's all said and done, he might be at 6'4", 265 pound DN and a dominant guy. So uh, very excited about Tavon. Coach Rock did a great job of recruiting him. Our next signee is from Harper Woods, Curtis Jackson, a 5'11", 155-pound wideout. He was a three-sport athlete, also showcased his skills on the basketball court and on the track, was one of the state's top hoops performers in his class, helped his team to a state playoff appearance this past year, uh, earned multiple varsity letters during his prep career, and was a multi-year starter and performer for Harper Woods. Yes, yeah, another Harper Woods guy that uh, played for Rod Oden. Um, truthfully, uh, you know, Bronx and I are kind of taking this guy together. Um, um, you know, he's a he's a very good basketball player. Um, you know, scored a lot of points, scores a lot of points for Harper Woods, a point guard. Um, and, and so, when when I started studying his tape in football, it's just a no-brainer. He's either going to be, you know, he's going to be a, a football player or a basketball player here, or a both. Um, he's got that kind of skill set. So, um, you know, as, as, as a freshman, we're going to have to just sort it out. He'll probably play football the whole season, and once the season ends, go to basketball and see how it goes there. Um, you know, if he's great at both, and, you know, uh, Bronx and I will probably play pickleball one-on-one -on -one to see uh, who gets him, but uh, that's just going to be an easy victory for me. So I guess I'll probably get Curtis. Our next addition from East Point is a 6'4", 285-pound offensive lineman, Elmir Yakupovic, uh, who brings significant size and potential, played on both sides of the ball during his prep career, was a standout performer up front for the Shamrocks, was an all-conference and all-area choice, and a four-year letter winner and performer on the all-Macomb County squad. Yeah, Elmir is a big, big man, big man, very athletic, very impressive highlight film. Um, um, he can really move his feet, uh, has, has uh, you know, the capacity to, to have a lot of talent, things you're looking for um, in offensive linemen. You know, the, you know obviously feet are, are most critically important, but, you know, leverage and body position, all those things are, are huge. And uh, Elmir has the athleticism and, and the, physica <coughs> excuse me, the physicality to, to be a great offensive lineman here. And, Again, I, I'm sure Coach Parker's going to turn him into a, a great player. He's he's a, a you know got got great uh, potential for us. Next, going to Detroit from Martin Luther King High School, Marshawn Lee, a 5'7", 165-pound slot, who is a standout playmaker at Martin Luther King High School, led his team to a state championship as a junior in 2018, was one of the top performers with the ball in the Detroit metro area, an All-State honoree this past season, uh, who was also an All-City and All-Detroit choice, named the Detroit Public School League Receiver of the Year. 
Yeah, Marshawn Lee is, uh, you know, sometimes I guess when you're a little bit shorter, I think I thought he was the best player on King's team this this past year, and they've got some D1 guys. Um, but Tyrone Spencer, uh, their coach, uh, who's a great coach, uh, speaks very very highly of Marshawn and. Uh, you know, we were we were going to practice on uh, the day that Friday that uh, Shores Mona Shores was playing King. Um, we were sitting in the office. We had a meeting at two, um, and then we were watching the the Shores King game. And uh, the thing that impressed me the most about Marshawn is before the game started, you know, guys just kind of circle around the leader, and the leader's trying to fire him up. Marshawn Lee. Marshawn was the guy that was firing the whole team up. You know, he was the vocal leader uh, for, for Martin Luther King, and that's a powerhouse. And so for me, you know, he's validated, you know, obviously by the coaches and, and his teammates. And, you know, the camp he came to was just like, wow. So he's, uh, he's kind of like Kashif, uh, you know, just an unbelievable athlete in open space, uh, can do it all. Uh, most people from Detroit when they saw that Marshawn had committed to us, uh, texted me and said, man, you got to steal there. So uh, very excited to have uh, him um, be, a, be a Bulldog. Uh, he's a great young man to recruit. Um, and all my staff, Steve uh, did a good job with him, but all my staff really uh, liked Marshawn from the beginning, and, and uh, we, he was a big priority for us. Next from Southfield, we have Jaden Littlefield Davis, a 6'4", 260-pound defensive end, who was a standout defensive lineman, also played tight end and served as a long snapper, had strong recruiting interests uh, from the east side of the state, received multiple varsity letters during his prep career, was one of the area's top talents, and an all-area choice with the uh, ability to make plays. Yeah, Jaden's a long guy, um, very athletic again. So, you know, we're looking a uh, common theme here of uh, DNs that are long, athletic guys you know who you know can are physical enough to to handle uh you know offensive tackles in our league but also fast enough to to be great pass rushers um i don't think our pedigree here at ferris state has uh disappointed anyone considering the fact you know we got two guys in the nfl that are d linemen that have played dn and a third that uh, hopefully will be after this um this year um, with Austin Edwards. So uh, great group of uh, players that we've had, and Jaden is going to be one of those that continues to grow in our program. Um, great mom, no, knew uh, from the beginning she wanted the best for Jaden, and she felt like uh, Fair State was the best, so uh, we're excited to have him. Our next addition from Florida, from Plant City High School, we have Zamir Knighton, a 5'10", 170 five-pound running back who brings game-breaking ability, one of the top performers in the Tampa Bay area. It was chosen to compete in the Hillsborough County Senior All-Star Game at Tampa Bay's Raymond James Stadium, was ranked as one of the statistical leaders in Tampa Bay in 2019 after helping his team to a 9-2 overall mark as a junior in 2018. Um, Zamir's a, a great athlete. Um, his uh, athletic director, uh, is a former player of mine, Tim Leesburg. So uh, it's nice to walk into Plant City and, and see a former player who's an administrator now, coached by James Booth, uh, who's a twin of uh, former coach at Manatee. So a lot of connections there. Um, so very, uh, very happy to get Samir. Great family. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. He can, uh, he can really, uh, you know, burst. Um, you know, make people miss, but he's also a powerful athlete, you know, built like a stocky athlete, a one-cut guy, and that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for, you know, guys like uh, making 8,000 8, cuts to try to, you know, score a touchdown on every play, but, you know, to get those yards after contact and things of that sort, and Zamir's built that way. So uh, we're thrilled to have Zamir. Um, our two running back recruits uh, off this list are both from Florida and those two guys can battle it out. Our next addition uh, back from the state of Michigan from Detroit Edison High School, 6'2", 175 pound quarterback, Michael Martin L., who was a talented signal caller, began his career at Martin Luther King High School where he was a member of the state championship team in 2018, was an all area honoree who received strong recruiting interests, one of the top athletes in the Detroit metro area. Yeah, Michael also from Edison, uh, our third guy from Edison that played for Coach Brock, but. Uh, a long, athletic guy, 
uh, 6'2", just kind of coming into his own body type, type wise, um, you know, 6'2", 175, he's thin. Um, it would be interesting what he can do with his body over time, but uh, uh, he's young for, for his grade, so hopefully he's going to get a lot of growth and, uh, you know, get thicker. Um, he, was, uh, he was a quarterback at Martin Luther King, um, ended up transferring here to Edison for his senior year, um, had a great season. But, uh, you know, a lot of upside to him. He's, uh, he's got a chance to really grow in to that height and uh, be a thick, strong athlete. And, you know, we'll see if he's a quarterback or whether he'll play another position. It'll be interesting to see, but we'll be open-minded and see what he can do. Next, from West Bloomfield, we have Byron McCormick, a 5'9", 170-pound defensive back who played both cornerback and safety on the prep level, was an all-conference honoree who also competed in track and field, was chosen as one of the top cover men to watch in the Detroit area for 2019, named to the Detroit All-Metro North squad as a senior, and led his team to a 10-2 overall record and a state playoff berth with a regional finals appearance this past year. Played for Ron Bellamy, who's doing a great job at West Bloomfield, one of the uh, best coaches in the state. Um, and West Bloomfield's one of the powerhouse programs in Michigan. Um, and uh, Byron's uh, one of their best players. So they've got a bunch of guys that, um, you know, have, uh, you know, had a lot of success there, um, you know, Division One guys. But uh, Byron is one of the guys uh, very well is respected in their program. We're thrilled to get a West Bloomfield guy. Um, he's a quick guy. He reminds me of uh, Javante Alexander, um, someone that you know was a great player here for for us for for a number of years. And uh, so hopefully Byron develops into being like Javante. But he definitely has a skill set like that. Very uh, quick and explosive, and a great cover guy. Next edition is a 6'3", 170-pound athlete from Dowagiak, Kalen Murphy, who played quarterback, also competed in basketball along with track and field, led his team to a conference championship, was an all-conference and all-area selection, who served as a team captain and was a multi-year starter, also ranked as one of the Chieftain's top student athletes in the classroom. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, the third quarterback that's a 6'3", that potentially, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with them. Um, so Kalen's uh, another athlete, uh, so that's how we listed him as an athlete. But he might be a receiver. He might be, you know, a long corner. He runs well, um, but, you know, he played quarterback in high school. And so I love quarterbacks. I believe that quarterbacks have already uh, kind of mastered what you need to be from a leadership uh, standpoint and from, uh, you know, leading, uh, managing a team and, and having the right uh, intangibles. And so Kalen... Kalen seems to have those intangibles, um, and uh, so we're excited to, you know, bring guys like this into our program. Winners who, uh, you know, can help us develop, and and guys that are persistent and determined to, to get a lot of, uh, you know, player development, you know, physical and mental and emotional growth to to be able to play on a college football team, like this program has. And uh, so if he's determined, he'll have a great career here. Next, we'll move outside of the United States to Montreal, Quebec, where we have a 6'1", 250-pound defensive lineman, Brett Fillion, who is an outstanding prospect from Canada, was the son of former Bulldog All-American, along with NFL and Canadian Football League standout Ed Fillion, played multiple positions on the defensive line, helped the Cheetahs to a state playoff berth in 2019, and was a dedicated athlete with the ability to make plays up front. So, yeah, Ed Fillion's uh, son, so... People that have been around here a long time know who Ed Fillion is, and and uh, Ed brought him here, and and uh, we're excited. You know, we watch his film, and and sometimes you get in those situations where you're like, well, you know, I mean, is is are we taking this kid because uh, his dad was an All-American here, or you know, is is the kid of great value? And uh, Brett's of great value. He's uh, he's explosive, and he kind of. Uh, you know, kind of models how we've been with our D-line is, you know, quick, stocky, explosive guys. And uh, he's obviously going to put some weight on, but we think he will. And, uh, you know, he's, he's got the ability to make plays. So our D-line, um, you know, has been as good as uh, D-line that there's been in the nation, and that will help Brett to grow. And, uh, you know, excited to have him, very excited. And, and uh, excited to have Ed back as a fan. 
Um, he's always our fan, but now he's going to be here and be a fan. <laughs> Next, we have uh, from the Saginaw area, from Birch Run, A.J. Polly, a 6'3", 255-pound offensive lineman who was a two-way standout that played multiple positions on both sides of the ball, received strong recruiting interests, was a multi-year starter and letter winner, a four-year varsity standout who also wrestled during his prep career, was an all-league and all-area choice for the Panthers, also an all-state honoree this past fall. Yeah, A.J. seems to be the, uh, the leader of communication within our commit, so... Uh, He's, he's the guy that, that just kind of, you know, central control. Um, he's the guy that knew what all the guys were feeling and, and who was committing when and, and those kind of things. So uh, very, uh, very good football player. Um, again, you know, I think uh, we've done extraordinarily well with our offensive line. Um, our offensive line is going to be great again next year. And uh, we uh, – we are into player development with the O-line. Very rarely do we have a transfer. We have had maybe one uh, or two over the course of the time we've been here. But uh, typically it's just, you know, take them as, as true freshmen and grow them in the program. And we can see A.J. Polly growing in the program and being uh, a dominant force for us in the future. Our next signee is from Muskegon Oak Ridge High School, Leroy Quinn Demon, uh, a six foot, 230 pound linebacker, was a four year varsity starter, running back, and a playmaking linebacker. Set Oak Ridge career records for rushing yards and rushing touchdowns, received strong interest, ran for more than 5,000 yards in his prep career with uh, 70 plus touchdowns was listed as one of the state's top backs, an all-state all honoree uh, in 2019, and compiled nearly 1,400 yards and 26 scores uh, in his final season. Yeah, uh, Leroy's uh, a good-looking athlete, man. He's, he's, he's a thick-looking guy, six foot 230. Um, yes, he has been a running back. Potentially, uh, he might play in that position, but you know, you kind of just in your mind have a profile for certain guys and their body types. He reminds me of Avante Bell. Avante was, uh, you know, Lansing Sexton's, uh, you know, leading rusher his senior year, and, and Leroy's been that too. And, and so, uh, big, thick guy, coached by Kerry Harger, um, you know, a tough guy, uh, Mr. Everything for, for Oak Ridge, and uh, a great young man with a great family. So, uh, you know, a local guy, great program, and so very excited to, to get Leroy. Next up we have from Saginaw Heritage High School, Keegan Robertson, a 6'1", 195-pound linebacker, also played quarterback safety along with linebacker on the prep level, was a three-year starter and letter winner, two-time all-conference selection, a team most valuable player. The two-sport standout threw for more than 900 yards and rushed for more than 700 yards as a junior, was named to the all-Saginaw Valley League squad. Yeah, played uh, for Matt Peterson, a great coach there at Saginaw Heritage. Um, known Keegan for a while now, for a couple years. Um, very impressive, very personable. Um, so, you know, sometimes just a little advice to people who want to get recruited, you know, be that guy that, you know, seems to be respectful and, and determined uh, to be with a program. Um, he recruited me as much as I recruited him. And he won because he, you know, obviously got a scholarship to play college football. And so it's a victory for him and for me. Um, great family. Um, you know, it says 195 here. He's a quarterback in high school. Yeah, on his official visit, he weighed 215. So that's why we kind of got him penciled in as a linebacker. 6'1", he'll probably end up at 230. And, and uh, he's a good athlete. Um, you know, at our camp, I think he ran like four, five, six, forty, and and uh, he's an athletic guy, and so very excited about Keegan and a great young man. Next, from Canton McKinley High School in Ohio, we have Iosef Sapia, 6'1", 225-pound linebacker, was a three-year varsity standout, chosen as a first-team All-Ohio selection in 2019, helped his team win the Federal League title and reach the second round of the state playoffs, had 75 total tackles, including 53 solo stops, along with seven tackles for loss during the regular season. His father, Blaine, played six years in the NFL and was a two-time all-county selection, also tabbed as one of Max Prep's top 100 under-the-radar prep players in the country. Yeah, I saw far, um, is a linebacker that Coach Miller's uh, pursued from the beginning. Um, so, you know, he, he uh, you know, really did a great job recruiting him. 
Um, I know um, when we were at Ashland, he went over to, to watch him play when we were on the road. And so uh, Coach Miller did a good job pursuing him. Um, he just did his official visit this weekend. And, and I think we got news yesterday that he had committed. And so huge, uh, huge upside, you know, a tackling machine, um, you know, a family that loves football, a dad that uh, played six seasons in the NFL. So I'm um, very, very uh, thrilled to have him. Next, going uh, back to West Michigan, a 6'3", 205-pound linebacker from Montague, Brennan Schwartz, uh, competed at multiple positions, including safety, tight end, and receiver. Led Montague to a 10-3 overall record in his final season. Totaled nearly 80 stops with six interceptions in 2019. Was an All-State safety. Also finished uh, his junior season with 33 catches for 756 yards and seven touchdowns. Was an All-Region and All-State player on the baseball diamond as well. And named to the Muskegon Chronicle Dream Team each of his final two years. Yeah, Coach Steve Anise and, and Coach Brian Rock came back from Western Michigan a camp, and, and they were just talking about uh, Brennan, um, just his measurables. Uh, his vertical was extraordinarily high, and, and his uh, standing broad jump really long. And even Western Michigan coaches were like, wow, I mean, this kid, uh, what an athlete he is. And so uh, kind of tried to keep it a little bit quiet so that people didn't jump uh, find out about him but uh you know a little bit off the beaten path in montague and and thank god because uh you know if he was in different places he might have you know got picked up by a d1 but uh coached by pat collins great great coach there at montague uh cody cater a uh, former player of mine at grand Rapids community college is, is the offensive coordinator there and they did a great job helping us with brennan and and uh, we just think there's going to be great things you know he's six three a legit athlete, um, probably end up being a linebacker, but could be a tight end H-back. He's got great ball skills, great athleticism, a multi-sport athlete, and an exceptional student as well. So really happy to have Brennan. Next from Jenison, we have a 6'3", 275-pound defensive lineman, Gabe smith Verwise, who was one of the top prospects on the defensive line, led Jenison to a state playoff appearance as a junior in 2018, also competed in track and field along with wrestling, uh, helped his team win its first state playoff game since 2001 as a junior, was an all-conference selection uh, this past fall and a multi-year starter and letter winner. Yeah, coached by uh, uh, Rob Zeitman, former assistant here, former assistant for me in Muskegon, um, and uh, so, uh, you know, Coach Seidman said something about uh, Gabe to us, and Steve went and recruited him, um, did a nice job. But, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you got, uh, I don't know, four or five, six guys. I don't want to start naming the coaches from Jenison that are former Ferris State, either coaches or players. So let's just say there's a number of them because I might forget one. But, uh, so it's great connection there, and, and Gabe's a guy that, you know, he's another one of those guys, uh, like I've mentioned, that, you know, has is, is, uh, got a lot of upside because they haven't played a ton of football. And, uh, you know, so hopefully grow into an opportunity to be a, a great defensive lineman and an interior D lineman. Um, he's got great size and hopefully grows up into being a 6'3", 300-pound uh, dominant force in the interior. Our next addition is from Lakeview Centennial High School in Garland, Texas. Ja'Cory Tarver, 5'11", 195-pound defensive back, who was a standout in the defensive backfield. Earned first-team all-district accolades, was regarded as one of the top DBs in the Dallas metro area. Twice earned all-district and all-area honors, and was chosen as a Lone Star Gridiron player to watch honoree in the class of 2020. Yeah, Ja'Cory uh, came on official visit a couple weeks ago. Very nice young man. Um, people are like, how do you find guys from Texas? The answer, I have no idea. So, uh, you know, Coach Hodges, who, um, you know, truthfully uh, has done just unbelievable work, but he's kind of in the office doing all the paperwork and handling all the official visits and, and doing all the things uh, he, you need to do in the office. So I've got to, you know, speak out that he's done a great job um, because sometimes when I'm talking about recruiting, you know, he's he's the home base guy. But, uh, you know, I think Coach Hodge has got a, a, a hold of Ja'Cory and, and um, you know, all of a sudden he's on a visit and, and we loved him. Um, his film is really good. 
Uh, he's a tackling machine, you know, obviously a high level of football in the Dallas area. Um, great family. Uh, his mom rolled in here and one morning and flew out the, that evening. So it was a tough day for her. But, uh, um, you know, Corey from the beginning loved Ferris and we loved him. So we're excited to have him. Next from uh, Dearborn Heights, Robichaud High School, 6'2", 180 pound wide receiver, Cam Underwood. Uh, played both wide receiver and safety. Helped his team to a 9-3 overall record and a state playoff berth last fall. Averaged nearly 20 yards per catch as a senior with uh, more than 1,200. 50 receiving yards on 63 catches with 18 touchdowns. Was a consensus all uh, state selection. Received Michigan Division 5 6 All State first team honors. Was a three time All State honoree and a highly talented performer uh, on the outside. Yeah, Cam's got great, great skill set. His ball skills are as good as anything I've ever seen. Um, I think he ran 4 4 5 or 4 5, something like that at camp. So um, he's a thin guy. You look at him, truthfully, you look at him away from football and you wouldn't believe it. And then he gets on the football field and all of a sudden, wow, he's a blur. So uh, um, his highlight film's very, very impressive. Uh, great young man, um, you know, excited to have him. You know, it's, uh, you know, we've done a great job with receivers here. We've had extraordinarily great receivers and, and Cam's gonna kind of add to the pedigree of that position. Next from West Bloomfield, we have a 6'1", 220-pound linebacker, Jason Williams, who is a standout linebacker for West Bloomfield High School. Helped the Lakers to a 10-2 overall record in a state regional finals appearance under head coach Ron Bellamy. Uh, garnered multiple letters on the prep level. It was a standout <coughs> talent from the southeast side of the state who also played baseball on the prep level. Yeah, Jason's a great athlete. I know, uh, you know people think highly of him in the Detroit area. Um, we started watching more and more film you know, sometimes when you're, you're uh, on a team that has multiple Division One uh, players, um, all of a sudden you, everybody's watching the Division One player, and then you see Jason out there next to a linebacker who's, you know, a high, highly regarded, you know, a Power Five uh, signee, and you're thinking, dang, you know, Jason, Jason runs around and does the things that that this guy does. So. Uh, you know, again, coached by Coach Ron Bellamy, and and uh, he started at Cast Tech and ended up leaving. And and sometimes when kids do that, um, you know, it, it, sometimes they think that they're, they're going to get opportunities to get more highly recruited. But oftentimes, you know, when you move too much in those situations, you you might sometimes, uh, you know, people kind of lose track of you. But uh, thank God we found out where Jason was going to school and. And uh, you know, got a chance to really study his highlight film, and and very excited about him. He's uh, he's going to be a great linebacker here. And last but uh, certainly not least, a 6'3", 205-pound quarterback from Southridge High School in Miami, Florida, Jalen Willis, who uh, had multiple uh, scholarship offers, regarded as one of the top talents in South Florida, invited to several uh, national-level scouting competitions, including the Under Armour All-America Camp Series. Led his team to a 9-3 record as a junior in 2018, which included a regional finals appearance and was a team leader and captain. Yeah, we uh, just had him up this weekend. Um, he's legit 6-3, maybe closer to 6-4, legit 205, maybe closer to 215. Um, got a great arm. Watch his film. It's very impressive. Uh, it says pro style, but he's he's not the, you know, the consummate pro style guy. He can make plays with his feet, and obviously that's an important part of what we do. Um, he's not afraid to run it, but what he does best is if, he, if, he, if the pocket does break down, he keeps his eyes downfield and he makes plays um, as he attacks the line of scrimmage, throwing the ball, which is really a great skill for a young person. Um, his dad's a great guy from, uh, lives in Indianapolis now, so it's a little bit easier for uh, Jalen to be in the Midwest um, because uh, his dad's here in, in, in the Midwest. So um, he went to Southridge, left left uh, Virginia to go to Southridge um, his junior year because that's where his dad went to high school, but uh, lived with his god um, godmother down there. But uh, so he's not born and bred in Miami. Uh, so he's, he's kind of moved around. So I think it would be an easy transition for him to come here and, 
he's got the skill set that uh, we look for in a quarterback. So got two, uh, you know, two really good uh, true freshman quarterbacks. Thank you, Coach Anise. That wraps up our breakdown of this year's signees. Uh, we'll open the floor at this time for questions. Let me just say something real quick because there's more thank yous. Uh, the people in here have done just an extraordinarily good job uh, marketing our program. Uh, I appreciate it a lot from Rob all the way down to the people sitting in here. And and uh, so that's awesome. Sarah Higley, Perk Weisenberger, uh, a lot of assistance and help. Sarah really does a lot of things uh, behind the scenes to help us to get these NLIs out and get them signed. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think I mentioned Coach, Coach uh, Tessa Smith, uh, you know, he's done a great job here too. I think I mentioned all the other full-time coaches, but uh, Coach Tessa Smith is also a guy that's really done great things for us. And uh, so, you know, let's just keep it rolling, man. It's been an incredible run. Um, Coach D'Antonio talked about a gap potentially in the program determining, you know, when he should retire. I heard him yet last night, and, and you always worry about that. But, uh, you know, there's not going to be a gap in this program for years on years on years because, uh, you know, our guys have done such a good job of recruiting, um, you know, high-caliber athletes. All right, Coach, with six players coming out of Florida this season, how does it help the program by establishing a pipeline in the state? Well, I think we have a pipeline just because of our reputation down there. So uh, I've always said this about Floridians. Um, you know, those, those kids are going to schools that win. I mean, they pick, they, they pick programs that, that win. Um, you know, they do it in high school, too, because they, they don't have any school districts anymore, so kids can transfer multiple times. You know, some of those kids go to four different high schools in four, you know, four years. But... Uh, you know, we've had great luck with Florida kids. Um, you know, you look at, you know, look at the guys we have here um, on campus, and, and they've done very, very well. In the past, we've done well. And so as long as, you know, I mean, kids get stigmatized or there's a stereotype, you know, from, from this place or that place, I don't believe in those kind of things, you know. You got to, as you recruit, you got to assess, you know, what kind of heart a young person has and, and whether or not they have the right, you know, the right, you know, principles and and uh, convictions to, to, you know, survive on a college campus. It doesn't matter if it's in Big Rapids, Michigan, or wherever it might be. So these kids would do well. They're the right kind of young men. It's rare to see twins playing together at the same level at one institution. Is there a difference in trying to recruit twins to come here? Well, I think it's cool when twins want to come to the same school. So, uh you know, you ask one of them, hey, you know, are, are you guys, you know, you guys plan to go, go together? And one says yes, and the other one says, well, it doesn't matter to me. You know, it's like, uh, so we've got now two sets of twins that are old linemen. And so that's cool to see. And then a, the, the other set of twins is in the secondary. But uh, the twins, the three sets of twins, they're all like, in the same position group together and so they're they're best friends and that's cool to see and 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 uh, these guys seem to be best friends as well um so um the andersons are are uh, good kids and and so that'll be fun to coach them and lastly is there a specific position group in the class that you look forward to working with the most well i like the two quarterbacks for sure that that we have and the other quarterbacks um, that, that we have that, uh, you know, we, we kind of label as athletes. We'll see how they are as well, but they can move around. But I would say the most dynamic uh, duo is those two slots, um, you know, Kachif and uh, Marshawn. They're, they're dynamic athletes. But, uh, you know, if you watch us play, you've watched, you know, you've watched, you know, Deion Earls and, Javon Shaw and Devontae Harrington this past year and you know I can name a, a list of slots that everybody's like man those guys are incredible um, and they've been incredible players for us so hopefully uh, hopefully those two are like them. You feel Tony that uh, any of these uh, that, that there are some that could fill, step in right away next year or it, it's always hard to say obviously yeah, but, but uh, there's some that could. Yeah the, the challenge yeah there's some that could from a skill sets perspective there are some that could but the challenge is in division two football um, you know 
like last last year we we started I think on August 11th, so maybe August 12th. But the kids get here, and they're here a day or two early, you know, before a day or two before the first practice, and boom, the first practice starts, and then in a couple of weeks, all of a sudden, you know, you got to put scout teams together, and you got a game in the next week, and and so it's hard, um, not from a skill set perspective, but from just an installation, knowing the offense, knowing the defense, knowing the fundamental skills you need to master, and and so you know from from a schematic and a technical perspective, it, it's hard to do. Um, it's easier for uh, Gustafson to go out there and put uh, his foot to the ball and say, "Well, I'm good enough to play as a true freshman," but for other guys at other positions, there's just so much involved from a learning perspective that, you know, we'll, we have to wait and see. But, you know, Division One people are like, well, why, why did D1 guys play true freshmen? Well, a lot of them are early enrollees, so they might be there right now. And if they're not early enrollees, they roll in there in June and they can have, you know, activities with coaches, which we can't. So uh, it's harder in the Division Two level to play right away. And knowing the seniors that you'll be losing, whatever, do you kind of, when you recruit, do you look for various positions that particularly where there may be a need, or do you just try to find the best best kids you can? Because obviously you still have some kids coming back that, that are your upperclassmen. Yeah, that's a great question. So so we don't want a gap. We don't want a gap at any position group in our recruiting. So we literally recruit like we're recruiting a football team. So we're trying to put in like five offensive linemen, for instance, in each class. We recruited six this year, uh, two slots, a couple outside receivers, you know, two quarterbacks, two running backs. And so um, we're trying to recruit a football team and, and, you know, we can't get completely to the too deep of a football team, but we want to be close. And so we want to have balance at every position group so that we don't get in a situation where all of a sudden, you know, you look at some of these teams and they're like, oh, you know, all of a sudden we've got three true freshman old linemen and two, you know, redshirt freshman old linemen starting. You know, we're, we want to have depth throughout. We want to have classes that are consistently capable of, uh, you know, every, every class is good. And, uh, yeah, we got a lot of returning players. And so, you know, these guys are just going to, you know, the, the other thing is, Sometimes young people don't want to wait their turn to play in a great program. And I just try to tell young people the best thing you can do, there's nothing better than playing for a great, great program that, that wins a lot. So the best thing you can do for you is to go with a winner rather than be with somebody who's going to lose consistently. And then, you know, I always try to equate, you know, productivity with happiness, being in, in, a, in, a, in the right culture and – um, when you're more ha- you're, when you're happier, you're mo- more motivated, more determined for, per- for personal growth, and then performance level increases. And so um, that's what I try to sell young people to not go for, you know, that, well, they, they're going to tell me that, you know, I'm going to play right away. Well, if they're telling you that, they're probably not any good, okay? And so that's something young people need to sort out. That wraps up our uh, press conference here today. A special thank you to our entire football staff, along with Coach Anise, for being here today. Congratulations on the exceptional class of recruits who have, again, joined the Bulldog football program. I'd also like to thank our athletic communications team for all their efforts in uh, making this event possible, all the media in attendance, and a special thanks to all the fans who tuned in uh, statewide, online, and around the world on the Bulldog Sports Network. Again, you can find complete information available uh, later on this afternoon and this evening at ferrostatebulldogs.com. Have a great day. It's a great day to be a Bulldog. It is. Thank you.